welcome to the new year. We've got uh, our regular, everybody here, at Panin at Panin, um, Jazzy at Crimson Nova, Dustin at Sky Steel, and Vfire at Vfire Cosplay. And of course, you can follow me for whatever unknown reasons at The Quest Sphinx, um, all, all on ins- on the Instagrams. Um, and the tweeters. And the tweeters. Well, my Twitter is at, at Quest Sphinx, just nothing, nothing special, nothing fancy. Somebody Your else secrets. on Instagram... Somebody else on uh, Instagram took just Crest Sphinx and oh yeah I was ve- rude I was very upset by this I think <laughs> I think it was like Facebook because it's tied to my email Facebook was like well, he's gonna he's gonna one day make an Instagram account isn't he isn't he and I didn't want my Facebook and my Instagram to be linked up because like mm-hmm. that just felt like too much control for Facebook. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Facebook it. owns Instagram, so... I, 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 yeah. And I don't want to give them more power. I just give them enough. I get really weird <laughs> tags every now and again from Instagram because I, I think I got, like, just at Panon for Instagram. Mm-hmm. And I guess there's, like, a school in Europe that's something Panon. Uh-huh. And so I'll get, like, weird tags of, like, yeah, at Panon, and I was like, that's not me. <laughs> Your true secret to Panon's success. No. Uh, we are getting all good so far. Seems fine. This is wonderful. This might, good. knocking on all the things, this might be, like, a without a hitch kind of stream. Um, <laughs> Don't say that, David, no. I know. I will. I do want to show off my, my fantastic new oh uniform. Oh my gosh! Look, look it's at so yes. good. Yes. This is. Do you feel like a true DM I, now? I do. I feel very DMly. I might <laughs> have to wear this for every single uh, DM position I fill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If, the only way to get the I don't know if I can wear the wig though. That was. Mm. It's. Mm. <laughs> I yeah. wore it once, and it's all knotted and whatnot already. Oh like it's God. so bad. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rena. You don't. It's it's here. I, I, I don't know. Does the Rena the chat's like, where's the wig? It's oh here. Oh my gosh! <laughs> no, you're like the modern cool AU D and Oh yeah, that that's it. Yeah, it's the AU D and Yeah, because <laughs> yeah. because we have like a modern D and D convention going campaign. It makes sense that our DM would have. Spiky yeah. silver blue hair. Yeah. That, or he knows he's too powerful with the wig. And- <laughs> That's, true. Ah! That's true. I don't know. The dice that you got me, like, they, they've they been rolling real well so far, so... <laughs> What's what have you done? <laughs> Jazzy! I'm sorry, it was an accident! <laughs> All right. Let's jump into this campaign. Uh, So, Panon, what happened last time? Oh, you're asking me. Yes. Um, he only takes notes. Not, I do. Um, <laughs> not great things happened last time. So, uh... We, My friend is gone! Yeah. We, we only have one-fifth of him. <laughs> one-fourth. One fourth. Thank you. One-fourth, because it's not right. five goblins. That's right. Um, not actually five. <laughs> so, we were going to help not five goblins with their cosplay performance, but there was a battle on the stage instead with some creepy chain monsters. Um, and we were interrupted by... Someone in a Gundam outfit who told us to run away because a giant chain monster came after us. Um, and I tried to fight it. Yeah. <laughs> it did not go well. <laughs> yeah. And so we left and then tried to find our friend, not five goblins, which is four goblins, um, in a trench coat. But today they were in Alphonse's armor. Uh, so we tried to find them. And it turns out they had been taken away in an airship, um, and only Smells was left. Smells is one of the goblins. Yes. Um, and he told us that the people who took the others away were dressed in black, and one was an orc with long hair, and one was a greenish tiefling. Indeed. And the uh, Gundam-dressed person that we don't know who they are said that they would meet us back at the Goblin's home and hopefully explain what is going on. (laughs) Did I miss anything? Players? I think that was a pretty pretty clear recap. Fantastic. Yeah. 
more than my notes. <laughs> and the old lady was very sad we didn't get to party with her at the end of con. Yes. So she, am I. She was very upset for this. <laughs> Jax was like, no. <laughs> um, all right. So we start off with you guys are in uh, the little little hut that was not Five Goblins uh, cosplay home base and home. You are... Uh, kind of uncomfortable at, because of the fact that, one, you are only with smells, and what you have been able to communicate with smells has been really rough because in the way that you can kind of understand some Latin terms, um, orc and goblin only have so much overlap. The Venn diagram is is, is a sliver of, of some mm. words. Um, you see this person in a um, Char's uh, a Shar Asnable cosplay um, with the full mask and everything. Um, you can tell kind of that they're very mask uh, kind of presenting. Um, that might be the cosplay. It might be how they naturally uh, portray themselves, but they are holding themselves very, very mask. And they they look at all of you, and he kind of is is eyeing you, and he goes, I. I don't know what I can tell you at this point in time. You, what, what do you know of the unbroken chain? You have gathered their ire. Um, the unbroken chain? Or the, the unmended oh. chain, excuse me. The, un, the, 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 the mended chain, excuse me. My, my apologies. Unbroken and mended works. <laughs> <laughs> I just didn't Same know thing. we were wrong. No, I, that was slip of the tongue for the DM. <laughs> Well, we no, they've been taking very skilled crafters, and we I think accidentally went in one of their bases trying to rescue our con mom, and we did not rescue her and ran away. And then we also did not rescue, but not five goblins and ran away. <laughs> I mean, to be fair, <laughs> we're alive. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah. also, we need more information. We yeah. want to be able to help our friends. But that's about all we know. They mind control. They they do that. I, I am forbidden by my organization to be able to provide more information. But you should know that you are in terrible danger. What's your organization? Yeah. And he kind of, he looks at, at you, Vea, and he's, he's kind of just questioning, like, you can see that question. Um, I, again, I am forbidden to speak of it. We are trying to be more concealed than even the chain is. If we are yeah. hidden, we can succeed. You said Inside you were the... Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, Rain, what were you saying? Um, you said you were the hammer that breaks the chain. Yes. So we can assume you guys are united in in fighting the mended chain, right? That is a safe assumption, dear okay. friend. Um, I mean, that's really all that matters to me, because we know already that the mended chain has and will continue to hurt the people that we care about. Uh, Talon, what did you roll? Six. Six. <laughs> like, you kind of study him, and like, he he kind of leans away because you're kind of doing the... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You get it. Um, and as, as you're doing that, like, he kind of like, holds himself steady. It's really hard to read his facial expressions with the mask. Um, you don't really notice much uh, out of the ordinary, and he seems to be pretty truthful from what you gather. Well, I'd like pat him on the shoulder and go, I trust him! <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he kind of withdraws uh, from from you, you patting him, and he he looks down to, to smells, um, and he <laughs> And smells is, is very shocked. Um, and uh, he, he, he looks to the, f the four of you. I, I assume you don't speak goblin. No. 
No. Uh, I mostly just apologized for entering his home without permission and wanted to make sure that he was safe. Um, and then he told me about his brothers being taken. Um, that, uh, that is most unfortunate. Is what are, what are your plans from this point? Find the airship, find out where his brothers went, and save them. I think solid plan. Mm. It is solid, yes. That's about all I we mean, can do. We don't really have a plan, though. But yeah. yeah, it's hard when we don't really know anything. Well, maybe I can fill in some of the gaps if you ask the right question. You know where they've been taken? Uh, I do know that they reside oftentimes on the island of Stromnos. Okay. Um, do you know if there's a way to break the enchantment? There are multiple ways, but most of them do not have a lot of success. Um, I, I wish that I could give you better news, but the ones that they enchant are not the ones that they are actively seeking. That is the most roundabout way that I might be able to answer that question. Hmm. Well, that kind of makes sense if their target was Con Mom, because she takes care of everyone going through. Mm -hmm. So taking control of her gives them access to pretty much everyone who's there. Hmm. Do we know what they're seeking them for? Uh, why else do people in power seek to take advantage of those in lesser states to enable themselves for greater strength, to take advantage of those who cannot defend themselves. There is power in creativity, in the mind that resides in a place continually pushing forward and creating something new from nothing. We don't know their end goal, but we do believe that is what they are doing, is they are trying to harness that ability, that power. You, you don't know their end goal, but why why did you decide to try to stop them? It didn't start with us cosplayers, Rain. They, they started with other creative types, the people, artists, uh, musicians, bards. They went after authors and, and other creators who sat down and devoted their life's work into something new and narrative, but that just wasn't enough for them. And the my organization saw this as a deficit in creativity and life and everything that was beautiful on the planet of Terrathor. We wanted to make sure that we thrived in creativity. That is why we took up arms. How long have you been taking arms against them? As an individual, I have been doing this for about a year and a half now. But I mean your organization. The organization has been taking up arms against them for more than 50 years. Um, Do they have job openings? <laughs> I would love to offer you that position, but unfortunately, your group has been marked. Looks at himself like, I don't see anything. <laughs> I guess, what's the best way to protect ourselves? I think a partnership with my organization might be wise. I... I don't want to recruit you into a war that you may not be willing to fight or really have any place in having to, to fight. That is not fair to you. That is not fair to people who want to live their lives. And you can kind of see that, like, on that pause, he was really trying to find the right words. And, and like, there was, a, there was a word on the tip of his tongue, you know, the, the, that, that phrase that he was just like, I just can't use this phrase. Mm. And he just kind of had to pivot at the last moment. 
And I want, I want to make sure that, that the group of you are able to con continue being creative. That is one of the reasons that I, I took up arms is like people like you, uh, that you are able to create, um, if you so desire it, I can be an informal contact. If, if this is your war as well as mine, I might be able to give you information as to how to get to them, where they might be next, um, and support you where I can. I mean, they've heard us. They've made this personal. And at the very least, we have to make sure that the other goblins get out okay. Uh, and if we don't do something, we're not going to have a safe place for anyone to have fun anymore. <laughs> or for anyone, like you said, to even live their lives and create. This is, this is fair. This is accurate. For those who have been captured, I, I, I do want to let you know, or off the bat, you are, they are safe. They are not being harmed. They are in a state of mind that they think is comfortable. And that is one of the things that by doing that, they are feeding off of this creative energy that mm -hmm. they are, the, the amended chain is seeking. Well, I mean, I can't speak for everyone in our group, but if we did work together, how can we help? Well, first things first is I think the most important thing is getting your friends back, getting the other goblins, um, getting uh, fumbles and ears and, and chief all back. They need to be back. They need to be safe. Um, I think what might be best is let me let me provide you with transport. I cannot I cannot give you the exacts, but I can provide the transport, and the transport can take you exactly where you need to be, excuse me. Um, and I can give you the list of the known con conventions that they will be running amok in. Mm. Um, and he pulls out from a, a little pocket um, a little note card, and he writes a little bit on it, and he uh, puts it on the table, and he just kind of slides it across uh, over to the four of you. <sighs> Be careful. <clears throat> what is your name? I cannot give you that. Um, I will, in our what future... should we call you that? I mean, yeah, can we give you, like, a fake name or a code name? I mean, we can't just call you a <laughs> Cosplay <guy>. name? <laughs> Cosplay name. Lerny. Uh, <laughs> Lerny? Lerny? Did you give me the title of Lerny? Me and my five heads will have words about this. It's a great Hades reference. Sorry. Thank you, Panon. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, we're right there. Um, he he kind of chuckles and goes, <clears throat> I I almost had a cosplay name. A, a friend of mine and I, we kind of had a, a thing. But we, um, no, I never had a cosplay name before. And um, is, there, is there a name that, that you could, I don't know, that we could agree upon. I think Lerny is not a great name for me, though. <laughs> um, I mean, we can just call you your favorite character. I mean, I assume that's your favorite character. Uh, I have I, I found myself uh, appreciating the mask lately. Mm. The um, mask characters, the allure of mystery and whatnot. Um, <laughs> and it feels appropriate when, when finding the Mended Chain. Um, for now, if we cannot come up with a name, uh, continue to call me. I was going to say Hammerbro. Hammerbro. And you can kind of see like this almost like crestfallenness in his eyes of like Hammerbro. Um, out, of all the a hammer. out of all the creativity in the room, Hammerbro. Um, but you're, so you guys said the hammer that'll break the chain. And it's, you know, discreet. Oh, well, Silly people. <laughs> it's just great. People won't think too much about it. Valid. <laughs> I was going to just suggest. Uh, Stacy says Jim Bob. Um, uh, I I believe. Just call me Char for now. 
Um, I don't, I not, I don't want to put you in more danger by giving you too many details about myself. Um, and I want to make sure that you are all safe. And if this is a fight you want to take, I understand it being personal. I understand that more than you know. But you're telling us to be cautious, and, and in the spirit of caution, how how is it that you expect us to trust you with no information? Because the mended chain expects us to trust people like our con mom. Uh, go ahead, roll me a persuasion. Mm, nah, eight. Eight. He he kind of he nods and he goes, "I I I see your concern, and it's very valid." Um. But when it comes down to it, I you have been marked, and we don't know. <laughs> we don't know. Sorry, the chat. Um. What what lengths they have marked you to. And and he kinda he kinda he he he, j- he starts walking towards the door and he's you can see that he's just like starting to get visibly frustrated and he goes, I want to tell you everything. You all four of you deserve to know everything. I The most that I can tell you is that one of you is marked more than the others. Be here tomorrow morning. I will have transport for you, and the they will take you to the location where they are holding ears and chief and and fumbles. They uh they deserve to be saved. And he gets up and he opens the door and he closes it behind him and walks out. Thank you. Question mark. Well, okay, we gotta save the goblins at least. Yeah, I mean, yeah. How should we prepare? We have like one night. What are we even going to be up against? <laughs> it would have been nice to know, but. <sighs> um. I'm gonna make dinner. <laughs> <laughs> um, Draxel, you uh, you take a look at the note, um, and it has four cons listed on there. It has Necronomicon, <laughs> heck yeah, Anime Hexpo, Wyvern Con, and Ruby City Comic Con. And these are all scattered across Terrathor. Do we know the towns that they're in? Um, the Necromicon is in Sithril. Um, Anime Hexpo is in Understone. The Wyvern Con is in Oak Heart. And Ruby City is in the Wise Pine Forest. Okay. Um, looking at it, we know about which dates that they're going to be in, so we can start possibly planning when? You have uh, a month before Necronicon. Okay. If you put them on a map, combined with the ones that we've already gone to, does it make a shape? <laughs> See, I'm looking at the map. Um, now I have to look at the map. Uh, a big pentagram. It it really <laughs> is a, str- a strong triangle. That's really what you're getting. Yeah. Someone cool. stretched the square real good. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So, Rain, you're, you're making dinner. Um, <laughs> Roll me just a quick history check. Eighteen. Um, there's something really familiar about Char. You're not 100% certain, but, like, the, the way that his mannerisms were and his voice, you're not sure if you ran at, uh, into him at another con or some something else, but, like, he's like, man, 
That's that that was oddly familiar. Mm. Okay. Uh, what else would you would you guys like to do? Ask is like anyone in our group vegetarian <laughs> <laughs> making dinner. No. <laughs> yeah. I didn't think so, Drexel. <laughs> no. What smells doing? Um smells goes off into the back room. Um and like that's kind of the space that you guys have been giving him uh like him and his brothers uh peace because that's their bedroom right um and it, and like you've glanced at it as you were walking around and it's not, it's not a very big room but he he comes out and with like this big duffel bag that's that's bigger than him and he's dragging it on the floor and there's handles and things sticking out of this and he he <laughs> plops it into the middle of the floor and he and he opens it up and he and he pulls out an axe that's like two sizes too big for him, and <laughs> and he he looks around and he goes. I think he wants to join us and fight. He's got lots of weapons. <laughs> and he kind of nods, and he he opens up the bag and he pours it out, and it's just got like rusty weapons and some rusty armor, um, but. Let's oh. look for something that'll work for you, buddy. <laughs> and maybe not so rusty. And I'm going to help him go through it. <laughs> okay. Uh, go ahead and roll me... <clears throat> I wish there was a blacksmithing skill for you. Um, <laughs> let me look at the skills real quick. Uh, go ahead and... What are your proficiencies? Uh, survival, animal handling, insight, and intimidation. <laughs> Let's do a survival, just based on, like, like what are these tools going to be useful? Like, which tool is going to be good? Um, I might, uh, in later levels, we might converse about a blacksmithing skill for, for you. Yeah, uh, 11. 11? Um, so, with that 11, like, you're finding, like... You you know which ones have some some good steel some some like the rust might be too much on on the axe here this this sword could be really good but it would be um, disadvantageous for for smells to take it um, and you find after a little bit um, a a sturdy dagger um, um, it, it it will do it will do for four ears or for smells excuse me. Um, and he, he's kind of, yeah, yeah, meh, meh, yeah, yeah. And he gives you a big thumbs up. Good job, buddy. <laughs> uh, Draxel and Vea. Anything that you guys want to do in this night? Mm, probably not. Like, because something big is coming up, she'd probably pull out a deck of cards and try to get everyone to relax. Okay. Before whatever this is. But yeah, since we've got something happening, um, Drax will try and probably like, separate out. Are there look for possible uh, things to hunt creatures uh, around? Or uh, since you're on the uh, the edge edge of of Karaga, there's a little bit of. Um, Unmanned woods and whatnot. Oh. Uh, go ahead. Also, roll me a survival check. Okay, uh, fifteen. Fifteen. With that fifteen, you are able to. Um, what animal would you like to be hunting in this point? Uh, whatever I could that might be kind of larger. So, what I'm trying to do is part of my features is I have cunning artisan, which is part of my rest. Mm -hmm. I can create a shield, club, javelin, or darts from the materials from slain creatures. So I want to possibly get bone to start making like a smoother dagger for uh, the goblin. Okay, so you are actually able to find like three very large um, wild rabbits. Um, oh. You're you're able to to get them, trap them. Uh, you don't do too much to harm to the pelt or to the skin, so you're pretty confident, like, give you, give it a little bit of time and you'll be able to turn some good weapons into this. Um, and you come back with, with the meat. Um, so yeah, you, you start crafting out something a little bit more reliable. Okay. Let's spend my time, yeah, crafting that for him. Yeah. Um, after, 
Talon, you have kind of organized the the bag, you find that inside of it, there is a, a pretty decent uh, hammer, uh, a war hammer inside of it. It does, it, it, it will do the job. It's not going to fall apart because it, you know, it's just a giant block of steel essentially on a, on a wooden handle. Um, you find a scimitar, a rapier, two more daggers, and a handful of darts. Sweet. Would these be useful to any of you? I kind of like the Warhammer, but I'll let you guys choose if you would like. <laughs> Maybe what we should maybe we should hold on to the stuff in case we we rescue the other goblins. And then we can have weapons for them. That's a good idea. Yeah. Keep it in my bag of holding. You have a what? What? <laughs> <laughs> you have a bag of holding? Yes. Yes, let's do that then. Okay. <laughs> Tell me the list again out of character. <laughs> Um, it was a warhammer, a scimitar, a rapier. Um, oh, wow. Well. Sorry, should, should I slow down? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Warhammer, scimitar, rapier. Yep. Uh, I said two daggers, two more daggers, and then five darts. Okay. Okay. Cool. Uh, anything else that you guys would like to say or do before we jump into the next morning? I think I just spend my time working. Okay. You're working. Uh, Rain, you, you make... Uh, go ahead and roll me a... There's no cooking skill in 5e. Um, a performance? Roll okay. me a performance. Food is a performance, especially in Shokugeki. Yeah. Um, let's see. Nine. Nine? Not the best thing that you've ever made, but it, you know, no. <laughs> you know, but it's 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 better than like boxed mac and cheese kind of thing. It, I was distracted. Yeah. <laughs> um, and everybody kind of is feeling a little bit, um, a little bit refreshed. You know, having that homemade meal in comparison to con food um, is always one of those first things that like everyone's just like, yes, this feels a little bit more human, essentially. Um, yeah. Vea, are you doing anything else? Nope. Other than the cards? Okay. So I will jump into the next morning. So you guys go into the, the get some rest, and you're all kind of a little pensive. Uh, there's this concern uh, hanging over you guys. And as you wake up, you hear um, this loud coming from outside. <sighs> and smells as and runs runs out with the dagger like in hand. Oh. <laughs> Wait, 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 Just, that might be all right! Rah, rah, rah. <laughs> um, chase after him! <laughs> you, chase, you chase after him, and, like, you kind of swoop him up, and he goes, rah, and there is uh, four griffins outside with saddles on their backs. Oh, cool. Oh, boy. All right. Um, I guess we're doing this. <laughs> I'm, like, so excited. Okay. Even though I've got the squirming goblin in my hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. It smells. I'm going to wait and let the others get on first. Just to... <clears throat> who is getting on? Um, who is getting on a, a griffin first? I start nervously approaching the large beast. <laughs> um, go ahead and roll me a, an animal handling, Draxel. What is my uh, not too bad. <clears throat> Five. Okay. Um so you you slowly like start approaching it, but you you know that in some in some animals, you know, you, eye contact is very important. Eye contact is important. That's kind of where your mind is. <laughs> and it just <laughs> cries out at you like the longer that you make eye contact, but eventually <laughs> It, it kind of, it turns and exposes its side for you to be able to climb onto its saddle. It, but you have the impression that you are not on the, uh, on the right, um, you, you didn't start off on the right foot with, with this griffin. Nope, I'm aware. I nervously just... <laughs> big breaths. Uh, uh, do this. <laughs> pat, pat. <laughs> 
Um, all right, who's next? I'll go up to one. <laughs> Can I kind of like, it was weird, like lift up my hand to it, greet it. Yeah, go ahead and roll me uh, an animal handling with advantage. Uh, 21. 21. So yeah, it, it doesn't take much for you to like really understand, okay, this is, this is a very large beast. Uh, treat it with respect. Uh, don't look it in the eye. Learned that lesson. Um, and you, you walk up and you offer, offer your hand and, um, it doesn't take long. You can, you can feel the air move past your hand and it starts to kind of nuzzle into your, your, the, your palm. Yeah, just hop on up. Yeah. Um, did we notice anything with like the, I don't know if they would have tethers or gear or reins or saddles. Would there be like anything familiar or like buttons or anything like that that would give us any hint of where it's from? Uh, go ahead and roll me a in, uh, investigation check. Okay. Investigation 12. 12. Um, so as this is, um, as you're kind of like looking over, um, you notice that this, the leather saddle is very high quality. Um, this is something that, uh, master craftsmen would have made. Um, you don't see any symbols that are, uh, stating that it would be handled by this person or that person or anything along those lines. Um, it does kind of have a, um, a wear to it. So it does tell you that like people have used these saddles before, um, but they are well kept. Um, very little signs of actual wear overall. And, um, yeah, the, you'd notice that on the saddle itself, there is a hammer, uh, imprinted right below the, the horn of the saddle. Um, but that's that's the most that you can denote. Uh, okay, I try to get on the Griffin. <laughs> okay, go ahead and roll me uh, an animal handling as well. Oh gosh! Turtle Bunny says, "Soar through the skies on a saddleless Griffin, you coward." Uh, six. <laughs> <laughs> six. Uh, much, no. <laughs> yeah, much like uh, Draxel, you're you're a little nervous because of how large this beast is in comparison to you, and. Um, it picks up on that. It it notices your your hesitancy and is Imagine even his like his tail is just like swishing really nervously. <laughs> and like as as you put one foot into a stirrup, like it kind of starts like leaning away from you, and you can tell it's just having fun with you. Like it's just it's not. It eventually lets you on, but it it's like picking on you just a little bit. Cool, cool, All right. cool, cool, cool. Sea cells, nice griffins. <laughs> All right. Gonna hop on with smells. <laughs> the knife away. Put it away. Yeah, there we go. There we go. All right, we're gonna get on this one. Okay. All right. Animal handling. Yep. There it goes. Ooh, that was real close. Seventeen. I was gonna have you roll with disadvantage, but you told smells to put the knife away. Ah. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Smart. Um, seventeen. You kind of pick up on what everyone else is doing, and you ha move smells to to your to your back. Um, and the the creature doesn't seem to mind you too much, and s just even leans into you a little bit. So climbing onto the saddle is a little bit more ease. Um, and once all four of you are on, you kind of feel this um, this magical uh, toothpick kind of snap. It, it's not much. There's just this. Um, noticeable, and the moment that all four of you are on the saddles, there's something that signifies all of the, the griffins, and they look up into the sky, and they just take off. They start running, um, and then eventually there is a, the, the chill of air as you guys are in the air. You are flying, you are gaining altitude, and it feels a little overwhelming at first, becoming one of the one of the creatures in the sky where so few creatures are constantly living and you see the world grow smaller below you. Um, I am gripping my griffin like <laughs> that happened way too fast. I was not ready. <laughs> oh my gosh, we're way up high in the sky. 
Axel begins to hyperventilate. Just <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Anyone in the party not afraid of heights and flying? <laughs> I can't Faye tell is if just this having is... a good time. <laughs> <laughs> this reminds me of that scene in the Mummy where they're on the plane, and it's like, "Are you having? Are you all right? Do I bloody look all right?" And then the, you know the Medjay guy like, "How's it hanging?" <laughs> I imagine Rain's a little scared at first, but like once he's like cool on the saddle, he's kind of doing like the Falcor at the end of Never Ending Story, like. <laughs> <"Yeah!"> <laughs> Uh, all right, so you guys uh, are flying, and uh, you are in Karaga. That is where you were at for Nanikon. Mm. And after what feels like a couple hours, you start flying over what you recognize to be Karish Kagal, um, your hometown. Um, you're not quite certain how fast you're flying, but you are flying pretty dang fast, because it was a couple days journey to travel from Karishkagal to Karaga. So the fact that within uh, within an hour, maybe two, you have crossed the entire countryside to uh, Karishkagal. Um, is there anything that, like, you guys are flying close enough that you guys are convert, you are able to shout out to each other. Is there anything that you guys would like to say or do along your journey? Um, can we hear each other well? Yes. On the... Yeah. Okay. You're not, you're not like, <laughs> it, you'll be able to hear each other. Like, you don't need to shout too loud. Yeah. You, uh, you and Smells doing okay over there? My head is, like, in the griffin. I don't even know where we are. <laughs> <laughs> I think I see Fine. your house from here. Or your grandma's house. I'm fine! (laughs) (laughs) Smells, are you okay? No, 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 no! Oh no. Oh no. I sit up and I grab him and I like holding him, I don't know where to hold him at. (laughs) Oh no. Are there bags? Are there (laughs) bags? He was like holding him off the griffin. Yeah, that's, that's like just, nasty. Just make sure that no one's behind you. Yeah, it's just gonna make sure we're upwind of that. He's <laughs> <laughs> like throws up, and Draxel's like over our here. hometown. <laughs> Is it raining? Gross. <laughs> 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 Can I say that I love vomit humor? I hate throwing up, but vomit humor is one of my favorites. <laughs> I am, I am the an adult. Family guy vomiting. Yeah. Yep. The <laughs> epicac scene gets me every time. Every time. <laughs> Get smart. That's a good one, too. That's a great one. I love that one. That's so good. Um, all right. You, you doing okay over there, Draxel? Like, just gotta like, lift up. Now, look over the edge. <laughs> no, not you too. <laughs> I will a constitution saving throw to see if I do or not. Yeah. <laughs> it might be like the sympathy barf, where you know you see someone else barf and you barf, and it's the and opening eight. to office eight. Ah. Oh. Yeah, you you have lost your lunch, you have lost your breakfast, and you have lost your dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and mm. yeah, that, that starts a chain reaction and smells is the next to go. Oh god. <laughs> Why has it come to this? <laughs> <laughs> just gagging. I'm just gonna make sure I'm very upwind of this. Yeah. I know. Like hearing it and just I'm la, la, looking la, la, straight la. ahead <laughs> to avoid seeing it. <laughs> Um, so, with that out of the way... Is that what you're going to draw this week, Mercedes? (laughs) (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) Um, all right. So, you have been traveling for a little bit longer, and you guys fly closer to Sithril. Um, you recognize the spired city, uh, anywhere. Um, you have seen maps of this place, you have seen pictures of this place, whether you have come from this place or not... Um, I'm not too worried, but you are familiar with what this city looks like. It is uh, very elven-inspired, but 
lot of people live here. There is um, <laughs> renegade peak comedy. Peak. <laughs> <laughs> Look, it wouldn't be D and D if it didn't come to this, right? <laughs> um. So you guys land just to the outskirts, uh, outskirts of uh, outskirts of Sithril. <laughs> Sithril being a very, very clean city, very, very well known for its um, elven community because they are the ones who founded the place. Um, the upper rings of society are the high elves who live in the highest towers of, above all of the city to look down upon it. Um, there is a kind of emerald. Uh, emerald green likeness to the, the the buildings and everything as you walk through it it even smells fresh and and pleasant as you are walking through it being a coastal city the sea salt air uh is is refreshing and it's a little bit chilly in comparison to everywhere else that you have been um and the griffins they land outside of a stable um in Sithro um and you see a, a man wearing a robe uh, outside of the stable, and he, he kind of gestures you once you have landed um, at this stable. Um, hello? Hello, Rain. Well, welcome. Oh, jeez. You already, I guess you're expecting us, huh? I like did. helping smells like readjust to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like watching a toddler walk. Uh, <laughs> what did what did they look like besides the robe? Uh, they are covering their face with the robe, um, so there, oh, okay. there's a hood over it. Excuse me. And I just imagine them doing this. <laughs> <laughs> you can't tell who I am. Oh. Ooh, that, that needs to be washed. That still has that costume smell. Um, <laughs> um so uh, you recognize the voice. This is the the Shar cosplayer oh, from, okay, from okay, the day okay. before. Um, and they they kind of like gesture you uh, to the side a little bit. Um, and he, he he pulls you aside and he goes, I'm was the was the trip smooth? Well, mostly. Mostly. I slide sideways just like off my ribbon. <laughs> <laughs> we found some of us are are not uh, meant for Griffin travel, but but we've made it here in one piece. I, if I'm able, uh, on your return trip back to Karaga, I'm, I'll see if I can get you an airship instead. Uh, I'm sure some members of our group would appreciate it. Um, he he kind of snaps his fingers, and a few other people in robes and hoods come over, and like one of them looks at Draxel and looks at the the Griffin, looks da- down at Gra- Draxel. <sighs> and like very gingerly picks up the stained remnants and starts Ooh. leading the griffin off <laughs> off Ooh. scene. Would we notice any defining features with these robes or are they just pretty nondescript? I they, am hiding robes. They are very nondescript. They are all okay. kind of a uh toned brown um mm. something that they would be very easy to purchase, very cheap. Um you see a lot of people especially like um, priests or anything along those lines might be wearing similar brown cloth in, in some fashion. Okay. Good question, though. Very good question. Yay. <laughs> um, I guess, where do we go from here? You will want to um, head into the town. Um, and you will want to ask for... Uh, ask around. Go to the dis- shopping district and ask around for the gold... Market. I'm assuming you're as as crafters. You're familiar with the the gold level. Yes. 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 Okay. Yes. Um, you are going to be wanting to look for the gold market, but you're going to be wanting to look for a half orc um, by the name. Uh, Magus. Awesome name. Magus will be your. He knows where where the other goblins are being held, and he looks down and goes, "I'm surprised that you decided to bring smells with you." 
He has every right to fight for his brothers. That he does. I just didn't take him as the type to be proficient with such... Um... I got him covered. Okay. <laughs> I, I trust you. Um, I'm definitely going to be keeping smells near me, despite smells. Wonderful. <laughs> Uh, find Magus, he will be able to direct you into the seedier district, and once you're in the seedier district, um, it's up to you at that point. Sir, anything else that I can do to provide you any, any tools, any aid that I might be able to provide? If you have anything that will help us, we'll take it, but... Uh, I guess I'm not sure what, what to expect when we get there. My advice? Focus on your friends. That's all that I can... Uh, when it comes to advice, focus on your, on your friends. You might see more people in need, but to not create too much of a stir, we, uh, I ask, we ask, focus on your friends. For now. It's like out of character. <laughs> I'm like, this is like the great British baking show when you do the technical challenge and they're like, here's a sentence of help. That's all you get. <laughs> I have not watched any great ba- great British baking show, but I kind of wanted to make okay. like a bad joke, but I will not. I will refrain. <laughs> I will refrain. Sorry. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, well, we'll do our best. Is there... Is anyone from your team going to come? Or are we on our own? This are is the other people going to be protected? Y- y- this is entirely for, for you and your sake alone. All right. We have led evidence to believe that this is all of your doing at this point in time. We want to make sure that my organization is still in the shadows as much as possible. Mm. Okay. <sighs> okay. Um, I guess just gonna pull my own hood up and <laughs> get, go. get gone. All right, you enter the city. Um, unless there was anything else that you guys wanted to say or do, I apologize. I mean, it gives a formal goodbye to the griffin she was riding, and it Aww. and it bows very deeply to you. And uh, as you turn turn your back, um, it kind of nuzzles nuzzles your back a little bit. Yep. Uh, maybe we should maybe have a conversation about how we might be walking into a trap here. <laughs> um, yeah. Like, I mean, I know these guys are against the mended chain, but maybe. How, yeah, I mean, maybe even that's a maybe, but uh, could have taken care of us on the stage, though. Yeah, I like, mean, didn't have to rescue us. But I hope we're like, not, like, I was some... not doing great in that fight. <laughs> they I just wonder what they want from us. Are we just like a distraction while they do other things from the shadows and whatnot? Like, like what are they getting out of this? It felt like he physically couldn't say anything more to us, but I don't really know. Mm. And it's it's hard when it feels like Everything is trying to trick us when we go places. It's hard to not think that this is a trick, too. Mm. <laughs> but, I mean, we kind of started digging ourselves into this already. Mm-hmm. So, at this point, it's kind of the enemy of my enemy. Mm. Just... I don't know if we can trust him, but... Well, yeah, I mean, we're we're yeah. already here. <laughs> we have no other information, so... Mm. Keep an eye out. Yeah. But at least we'll get enough five goblins out of there. Yeah, for now we we save them, and maybe saving them here would prove to another organization that we're worth learning about them. All right. Do we want to? How do we want to look for this Magus? Magus. Magus. Sorry. <laughs> Difficult description Excuse of the half orc. Uh, I I I can retroactively yeah you you know it is male half orc, um, buzz cut, 
uh, long, long beard, um, very <laughs> intense demeanor, but um, you know that once speaking to him, that he will be pretty open uh, with you guys, um, and uh, tends to tends to work a, a small little vendor shop kind of thing where it's uh, a moving cart. So, like, he can set up wherever he needs to, depending on the day. Mm. Okay. So head in. I'm just going to start looking around. Cast guidance on myself. Okay. Go ahead and roll me a perception check. Thirteen. Thirteen. Uh, it doesn't take you very long to kind of sort out where the uh, shopping district is. Um, you are drawn to the crowd very quickly, and as you're walking through, um, you are hit with this wave of cacophony of people crying out over each other, going over marketable goods. Um, you see a fruit vendor, you see a spice vendor, and like those two smells are very strong, and, and um, they, they are almost relaxing, kind of smelling all of these flavors. You see the big pouches of, of finely grained it, uh, ground down spices and, and, and mixes and whatnot. And as you travel a little bit deeper into this area, you, you find, uh, there's fabric merchants, there's weapon merchants, there's a blacksmith, uh, nearby. Um, you can hear the loud pinging on the anvil. Um, you feel the heat, uh, not far, far behind. I love how we, we have V fire over here and then Blacksmith, you say? Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say, too, I was like, Tolan's like looking towards wherever the sound is. <laughs> um, but I just did it. As, uh, as as you are walking around, you you find like the main main area of the blacksmith, or not the blacksmith, excuse me, um, the main area of the shop where kind of everyone is walking around in a circle. There's the standard shops that shut up, set up every single day, um, and then you find like the wagons and the carts and and whatnot. Um, what would you guys like to do from here? Um, guess search him out, but maybe keep an eye open for the the gold menders or not menders, um, vendors. Okay. Uh, everybody, go ahead and roll me another perception check. Looking after good deals. Oh boy. Also an orc, half orc. Not Eight. great perception. I got a four. Eight. Twenty-five. Um, oh dang. Uh, 27. Jeez. Seven. Tallin? Nat 20. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> Everyone but me Ten. perceives many things, and I'm just doo to do. Uh, Rain, you're a little overwhelmed. Like, um, mm. with your natural concerns, um, you're just kind of holding your, your hood a little bit closer down. You're trying not to gain any, any sight. Um, you do kind of realize there's there's not as much reason to be hiding in this in this space, um, but that natural insecurities is is just welling up still with inside of you, and it's just anxiety is an anxiety, and it's not something that you can easily overcome. Um, mm. So you you hold on to that that comfort blanket of holding your your hood tight. Um, Draxel and Vea, it, it doesn't take you guys very long to find the gold merchant. You ask a few people around, and they're like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I, I guess like over there, like." There's some people who, like, do some, like, high-quality tools and, like, gold mark market, like, I don't know, I don't know too much about that, but, look, high-quality goods are in that direction. And with that help, Tolan, like, you are able to, like, pinpoint focus, like, as people walk in the crowd, it's almost like a movie where, like... Once you... in his life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are able to, like, see past the crowd. Like, it, how in a movie, like, you can see, like, a single character in the gaps between people walking by, and, like, you are able to pinpoint every single person. You're going to be able to remember the direction back to the blacksmith, and, like, the pinging, if anything, is helping you focus. Like, that <laughs> brings your your true sight to, uh, to the forefront of your brain. And you see this very gruff-looking... Um, looking orc working on a little bit of macrame uh putting everything you know tying and everything and uh what 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 do you guys what do you guys do from there on the half work we go talk okay um as you walk up to his little wagon it's um it's got a a small 
collection of tools. Like, they, they don't seem all that high quality, honestly. Um, they're laid out on a pretty shabby cloth. The cloth probably needs to be washed. It's got some large burn marks in it here and there. Um, and, like, there's a small little, like, um, awl, and there's a c- couple needles here and there, sewing needles. Um, there's a, a pretty cheap hammer, like the handle might fall apart the first time that you swing it kind of thing. And he's, he's just working on his macrame, and he goes, yeah, what's up? What do you, what do you need? Nice macrame. Oh, thanks. I'm, uh, trying something new. You know, the kids are constantly like, oh, I want to learn this, and I want to help them out as best as I can. So, here we go. What's up? We heard you have high quality tools. Uh, I have what I have. That's not an answer. And he he stops and he looks up and he goes, "You're absolutely right. It's not an answer." Oh, cool. Uh, we're looking for something of a a gold quality. If you have something like that, but um, we're also looking to to get somewhere if you're I we were sent by are you Magus? yeah I, I am Magus thank you for asking <laughs> this is poor Rain <laughs> <laughs> you must be Rain and the others yeah I, I my, my contact didn't let me know of, of your names um, who, who are the rest of you? my name's Vea Vea Draxel, Draxel. I mean, Rain's going to look visibly uncomfortable that his name is known and nobody else was. Um, wonderful. Vea, Draxel, Talon. Beautiful. The, um, yeah, I have, I have some gold quality. Um, and he, he lays the, the other half of the cloth over those tools and he, he hits a button on his cart that you can't quite see and he opens it up and he, Shows, uh, shows inside that there are some, uh, extra tools that look pristine, that look almost magical, like the way that they shine. And he's kind of looking around and he's like, I don't, I don't like to show these to just anybody, but friend of a friend and all that. Um, and you see that there is, um, several, uh, spools of thread. Um, and like looking at them, they are high, high quality thread, um, in many different colors. There is some large patches of thick, uh, thick leather that comes in, um, standard animal, but then there's like some, a little bit more, more rare, like that looks like snakeskin, but it's way too big to be snakeskin kind of thing. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else there. Um, yeah, there's, there's a couple other things. Uh, what all, what all are you, you're looking for at this point? Um. (laughs) I know it's overwhelming. You just go into a a Michael's and like, there it is. There's everything that you need and more. It's great. Um, we're also wondering if you could point us in the direction of Stramos. Oh, Stromlos? That's yeah. that's an island. That's not where we're going, friend. That's buddy. Stromlos is is an island. That's any any points uh, northwestern. Anyways, that's across the sea. It's an island. Not a lot of people stay there. I understand oh. why you would want to go there, but we're not going there today. Oh, well. I mean, I guess while we're here, um, Rain's gonna look at like, especially like black and white thread, probably. Okay. Uh, there, there is definitely plenty of black and white thread, and he goes, ah, those are kind of what I have on special right now. Um, those are threads that just won't break when being worked. At all? Like at all. At all? Like, they'll still, they'll still break down over time, but there is a magical component about them that when sewing with them, uh, when working with them, they recognize that, and they do not break. What about tangling? Tangling still a possibility. Not gonna lie, um, it's it's magic. It's not perfect. Uh, what are you asking for him? Uh, each spool is about ten silver. Um, I'll take a spool of black. Spool of black. Wonderful. <clears throat> Anybody else, or am I the only one shopping? What about you, Draxel? You seem to be the type that has a. 
proficiency in uh, hide. I've got, I've got cow. I've got, you know, rabbit. I've got bull. I've got hydra. I've got what? What are you what, looking for? What? Uh, hydra. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, Hydra. <laughs> and, he, and he pulls out kind of that snake skin that he was showing you, and like, yeah, the meshment on this is, is really well done. Um, it's very strong, uh, very resistant to, to falling apart, and surprisingly, scales hold together. Usually, you know, you start picking apart hide like this, it falls apart. You know, it doesn't have much to it, but scales are holding pretty strong on this guy. Yeah, what's the price? Uh, for three yards, it'd be about... Mm, 30 gold. So, 10 gold per yard. What? Set it down. <laughs> I, I can cut out a yard for you if that's what you want. You know what? Yeah, I can't avoid this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> 10 gold. Cool. There's a singular piece of gold in my pouch now. <laughs> After that. So he, he measures out uh, a perfect yard um, and it is a uh, and it's much like uh, any ream of fabric. Um, it's folded over, and he, he measures it out, and he pulls out these pair of scissors, and they they shimmer with just energy that all four of you can kind of tell. And you know when you're you're cutting wrapping paper and it just glides across the paper, he's able to do just that with the uh, with the hide, and he folds it up and wraps it real nice, and he slides it across his little little cart. So, after Draxel was buying that, I was going to ask about scissors, Mm -hmm. but I (laughs) see you gave a demonstration? Ah, yes. These are um, some of my favorite tools. Uh, I I have two pairs. Um, They are are pretty good. They they dull, just like many other uh, shears, but they don't... They don't dull that fast, and they just... They sing when they when they t- touch the fabric that you need. Um, they're pretty I expensive. They're they're. And he just stares at you for a moment. <laughs> I like you. I think you're hilarious. I want you to know that. I think you're legitimately. I think you're funny, Tola. I thought it was funny. It is. <laughs> I, I'm agreeing with you. I think it's funny. Um, <laughs> and uh, these are fifteen gold. Um. Straightest cuts you'll ever get, though. Can I pull out my two gold tickets and ask if he accepts these? Ah, friend of a friend of a friend. I see we're all buddies here. Um, And he goes, yes, I will definitely accept those. Cool. So I have two of those and then I can give him five gold. Beautiful. Perfect. And he, he exchanges it and he... Uh, he doesn't give you his scissors, but he reaches into his cart and he hands you over some of your own scissors. If you want, you can always get them engraved. I think engraving is worth it, and then you can mark it as, like, the fabric-only shears, you know? Mm. Uh, I think I'll, I'll hold off <laughs> on that, though. Okay. All right. What about you, Talon? Got anything for work and metal? Not this time round, fortunately. Yeah. More fabrics this time. That fabrics, threads. I mean, I've I've got the janky hammer, but that's kind of a hey, don't buy from me unless you know you're what you're here for kind of thing. Yeah. Sorry, bud. Uh, not this time. Maybe maybe next time you're in Sithril. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, if you have your shopping done, I can get you into the right direction of where where you need to be. Oh. I think we're ready. I didn't think we'd get to go shopping, so this is just bonus. <laughs> <clears throat> what you're going to be looking for, and I'll, and, I'll, and I'll make sure that you're in the right direction, you're going to be going down an alley. This alley's going to be a little dingy. Um, there's a door that looks like it's going to be falling apart. There's a secret knock. Get that knock in, and then you'll walk down, and the rest is up to you guys. Okay? Okay. And he goes, ah, well, you bought me out. Uh, that's all the things that I can pe- sell today. And he, he packs everything up and he rolls up the cloth and he stores it away in the little secret compartment. And he goes, all right, I'm just going to head this direction and, you know, off on my way for the day. Thanks for, uh, 
thanks for your purchase, noble buyer. And he kind of gestures uh, like this, and then he starts wheeling off with his cart. Hmm. All righty. Let's do this. Okay. Um, anything that you want to plan, say, or do before you uh, before I move on to the next stage? Um, I mean, I assumed we'd do most of our, or we've uh, prepped more or less before we left, so I think... I think we're yeah. ready. Okay. Uh, Talon, uh, as a reminder, you could just kind of have, like, smells, like, holding on to, like, the edge of uh, the hem of your, your shirt um, mm-hmm. or jacket and just kind of <clears throat> a little overwhelmed here and there. Um, yeah, I'm keeping them close by. Yeah. Like, pat them on the head every now and then. Um, after about ten minutes, um, uh, Magus stops and he goes, oh my goodness, oh, I just got this Charlie horse. Ah, oh, and he like leans down and he starts like rubbing, uh, rubbing his calf, and he stops at the edge of this really dingy alley. Like it is filled with trash on either side, like almost, um, almost two feet tall of just trash all along the walls. And you can see that there are a couple shady figures sitting at this alley, and they aren't paying attention to to anyone specifically. They're just kind of like looking around. Um, They're sitting in the trash. They're sitting on top of the trash. There's a couple people conversing um, in very hushed tones. Um, And he, he gestures down, down that alleyway and he gets up and he starts walking, walking away. Did did he actually show us the secret knock? Uh, uh, Ah, yes, uh, he he did (laughs) retroactively. He showed you. (laughs) Totally. um, He's. Three knocks, two knocks, five knocks. Okay. All right. Uh, I I will definitely be in the rear of. Wherever we're going. <laughs> what are the shady figures in the trash wearing? Ah, uh, good question. Go ahead and roll me just a quick perception check. <laughs> oh, rip eight. Um, they all seem to be wearing like pretty, pretty poor clothing. Um, it doesn't seem to be. Seems to be second hand, maybe fifth hand um, for some people. Um, dirty. You can like as you're you're at the the entry of this alleyway. Um, you look up and like the buildings just seem to go on forever, long enough to the point where as you're walking, like looking into it, it almost seems like they they almost meet. That's how high up they are. And um, this there's a there's a smell of just garbage and and refuse that as you're at the end uh, at the entrance um these people are are wearing just dirty clothes and like it shows that they're maybe not living their best life maybe life didn't give them the best opportunities maybe they didn't take the best opportunities themselves but um they they're they're not doing too great but a lot of them aren't paying you any mind can we overhear anything from where we're at roll me a perception check as well Can't keep my perception number in my head. Uh, 18. 18. Um, 18, you hear a few whisperings. Um, a lot of them are kind of like, you know, not, not any major words that you can hear. It's kind of like that uh, distant speak where someone else is talking, but you can't make out what the words are. Um, you you hear like one person talk, say to another one, oh, these tourists, oh, these... <laughs> Look at these guys. They think that they're, oh, look at me. I'm here in Israel. I'm going to help out. Oh. That's more or less what? kind of the words that you're hearing. What language is it? Common. Okay. Yeah. So, should we try to find this dingy door? Are going in. I'm going to look for it dingy door in the alley. Gonna yeah. start walking down it with uh, smells holding... I'm gonna hold his hand while just walking through it. Just kind of like <laughs> trying to pretend I'm cool. <laughs> Roll me an in- uh, intimidation check. Oh gosh. 14. 14? You're, you're 
feel pretty confident in your your coolness. Like you're just kind of like, mm, no one's gonna mess with me. It's kind of diminished by the fact that you have a goblin who's holding onto the hem of your jacket, jumping in the trash. He's just <laughs> having the time of his life. <laughs> 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 Big one, <laughs> and like oh just boy. jumping around. This is perfect. I love it. <laughs> I mean, it really completes the tourist vibe. It really does, <laughs> but it doesn't take long. This door looks like it's covered in in like tape to hold it together, kind of thing, and the tape is old. Um, the doorknob is missing, um, but you can still see like the mechanism inside of it. Um, as you are coming up to it, like it's even covered in trash as well. <laughs> I'm gonna let someone else knock. <laughs> <laughs> you feel like you really go to knock and you stop. <laughs> mm. Um, before we actually knock, can I do a quick detect magic and just kind of see if anything pings? Yeah. Um. Let me look at my. Uh, what? Types 5e. I can never remember what all of them do. Um, conjuration, necromancy, evocation, abjuration, transmutation, divination, enchantment, and illusion. Um, you detect that there is an illusion on this door. So I would point that out and then kind of just like look around to see if anything else stands out as magical. Oh. Give it... Oh, wait, I'll wait for that. Okay. Um, as you are kind of scanning the area, there... There seems to be some sort of um, illusion elsewhere. It's it's very well hidden, but you're picking up that there is some other illusion, if not multiple, throughout this alleyway. So, her having told me that there was illusion-based magic on this door... Draxel is going to assume there isn't actually a door and he's just going to try and like walk through the passageway. <laughs> <laughs> um, you, uh. So thinking back to when you guys moved the, the, the bookcase in the janky wheel uh, in and seeing like there was a wall but there wasn't a wall, you like start like walking and you just right into the door. Uh, I knock. Like a cat into a screen door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Do you uh, use a secret knock or do you just knock? Yeah, no, I do three, two, five. Okay, so <laughs> you do three, two, five, and the door opens up, and it reveals this very, uh, very ornate, gorgeous door, um, very, very pretty, and slides open these little, little blinky eyes. Um, yes, how can I help you? Are you here for the merchants and the wares? I believe so. We were told we could find good things here. You are in the right place, my lizard friend. Please, please come in, but remember the rules. No, no ruckus about, please. Oh, yeah, totally. I am not a ruckus guy. We're good. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know if I believe that, but I have a good feeling about you, lizard friend. And, the, and, like, slowly closes the door, like, to the last possible moment, to keeping an eye on you. And the ornate door opens up, um, and that's kind of where the illusory magic uh, ends for you, Vea. Um, you know that, like, that door wasn't really there. Um, and as the door opens up, there is just this narrow hallway, nowhere for anyone to sit. It just is beginning immediately a stairway down. Um, and it's dark. And it smells a lot better. Not by much, but a lot better. And, um, smells is like pulling, uh, pulling on you, Talon. is like, ah, ah, rah, rah, rah. Like he doesn't want to go in, or? Like he's pointing, like he wants to go in. Like, ah, okay, like okay. he's been following along and he's kind of come to the conclusion if that's where his brothers are going to be, that's where he wants to be. Cool. Uh, yeah, I yeah. walk on in. Gonna go in. Okay. Um, 
you, all four of you walk inside, and the door closes, and you see little, little beams of light from outside as this, as that poor unfortunate door is, is barely holding on. You walk for what feels like ten minutes before you reach this underground marketplace. It's much more open, but with hushed voices here and there. You're seeing these very dangerous looking weapons, um, these long spears with, with blackened edges, um, large gems larger than your hands and faces. You're finding books with words that just don't seem to go together. Some words are in common, the next one's draconic, and then the last one's in orc. Um, you're, you're finding all of these different merchant shops. Um, you're, you're seeing that there are a few people um, walking around, again, very quietly, making, like, putting coins down, and then, like, someone will pass an item to them. Um, and you notice that there are other shops that aren't very open carts, they are actually storefronts. Um, and they all have different names. Um, Transportation is one of them. Um, Hidden is the next one. And the last one that comes out to you is um, the Mended Eye. Oh. Um, I the lean into and... Ve, to Ve and I go, I bet you it's transportation. <laughs> and then chuckle. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> <laughs> would, would we be able to read any of the book titles as we pass? Um, what languages do you speak, Rain? Uh, what languages do I speak? Uh, common, Dwarvish, Elvish, Infernal. So a good majority of them that you're, you're picking up on, um, for some of them, like, you're getting, because of the fact that there are these tomes with different words, like, you're able to pick out, um, magical blank death. Um, Ooh. Soul trap blank. Um, think, and they, they just seem to be more and more ominous the, the more books that you pick up. Not pick up, but glance at. Cool, cool. Well, um, do we want like a group huddle here? <laughs> yep, probably need to. <laughs> right, right, gather up. Hey. All right, I don't think it's transport, <laughs> but we should probably stick together and maybe check out some of the shops. And I mean, I know that place has mended in the title, so that might be a good starting point, but I don't know if they're going to be that obvious. What was the other name? Uh, Hidden. But I guess I would say start with the most obvious and go from there. Yeah. I mean, it's not like... Uh, I don't know. They they already know who we are, I guess. Yeah. And so it, it's not really like it's a big secret that we're mm -hmm. here. I think for the most part, we should just keep to the shadows. See if we can watch before we can do anything. Because it's in like a dark underground area, right? And yep. Lots of people around. There, there's not a lot. I'd say there's probably like ten different carts, and they're all okay. manned by individuals. So Does there's it look at least like anywhere you can actually sneak. Uh, yeah. There's there's plenty of like cargo and whatnot that's unmanned, more or less, and like they're all within sight. So like people can see them, but there would be like places that you could hide around and like sneak behind them. Um. There's not large crowds that you could blend into, but it, you could try and Assassin's Creed, you know, put your hood up and try to, like, just move through a crowd a little bit. Okay. I, mean, <laughs> I think we should probably stick to the shadows and maybe watch and see how other people are going about going into these places. Yeah. Watch that first. sounds good. Observe a people watch, you know, like you do at a con. <laughs> <laughs> People especially, watching. especially for the anxious of like, how do I order things? I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know how to order those things. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know anything about that at all. So I guess we're going to people watch. Okay. So everybody go ahead and roll me a stealth check. I cast Pass Without Trace. 
Ooh, oh, no. Everybody gets plus 10 to your stealth check. Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> okay, good, because I have uh, Cause I got advantage. A two. Um, so 13. Oh. Yeah. 13, mm-hmm. Vea? Uh, at least 22. Let me see if I have a bonus. Uh, 24. 24. Draxel? 24 as well. And Tallinn? 15. 15. All I right. rolled a 5. <laughs> I got 2. <laughs> so I have disadvantage, so I have to take it. Oh. So, uh, Vea and Draxel, this isn't your first rodeo trying to, like, hide to the shadows, right? Like, just try to be out of sight. Um, with Wait, did we have advantage on that roll? No. Uh, oh, okay. That's what I thought. The uh, uh, no. Pass Without Trace is just a plus 10. Uh, yeah. Sorry. No, okay, perfect. Right. no, that's a good question. I appreciate clarifiers. Um, so as you um, as you kind of hug to the shadows and kind of hide behind a crate and, and a few barrels, um, Rain and, and, and Talon, you guys are kind of at the edge and you're like sticking your head out a little bit more than probably comfortable. But Vea and Draxel, you are able to like people watch without any problem. No one's going to be able to see you unless they are actively looking for you. Um, I'm just going to... I'm going to whisper to Draxel, just be very quiet and, like, giggle at him. (laughs) Be very quiet. Be very quiet. I'm going to start looking around for wabbits. All right, uh, go ahead, everybody. While you are all kind of looking around, everybody, with advantage, since you guys took the opportunity to hide and, like, stake it out, um, go ahead and give me a perception check. Fifteen. The Ben. Oh. Twenty-five. Three. Twenty-five. Tallin. Seven. You're so proud of yourself. Yes. I'm helping a goblin. I'm babysitting essentially right now. Okay. I'm distracted. <laughs> so. Oh, I should have rolled for for his stealth. Oh, he's doing great. Oh, man. He rolled a natural 19. He's fine. Dang. Yeah. Chazzy, those dice. <laughs> I'm sorry. They will be get us murdered. You. Um, <laughs> so uh, the way that I do these kind of rolls is that they're all grouped. So even if someone does fail, um, there's an average kind of score to be to be made out of it. With a 25, a 23, and a 15, you guys are fine. Um, you uh, are are watching. How long would you say that you guys watch? Like... There's uh, pretty standard traffic, people coming and going either to the market or into one of these stores the um, that hidden the transportation or the mended eye. How I'd long? I'd say at least 30 minutes. Okay. Yeah, kind of getting a feel for what's going on, what's normal. I, I kind of want to watch for how people act as they go in. I'm mm. um, not familiar with these type of people, so how best to duplicate the way they're going to be acting. Okay. So have it on when you watch this door, when you watch this space, you find that you, in the half an hour, you don't see the same person leave. One person enters, and then they're in there for that full half hour that you're there. Like, none of the same persons exit. Um, so one person will walk up, and he'll he'll kind of, like, look around, but not like a is anybody watching me kind of thing, but just like, who's all around? Um, the storefront is closed up, so you can't see what's inside the store. Uh, you get glimpses as the door opens up, and there seems to be a large um, bench at the end of the store for brief moments. Um, it's well lit, well better lit than what is out in this underground space. And um, there seems to be a single tiefling at the the end, uh, the other side of the bench, there seems to be note cards behind them. At these glimpses that you're seeing, you're not sure what's on these note cards. Um, and when it opens up, every time that the door opens, it's almost empty, except for that single tiefling uh, on the other side of the of the store. Um, Does the tiefling match the description we were given? Uh, remind me of the description. Um, the green one, green, greenish, right? Yeah. Let me see if I have any other... No, just green and dressed in black. Okay. Uh, this one does not. This one kind of has more of a red hue to their skin. More pinkish. Um, very kind of vibrant. Uh, a light rose, if you will. Um, and um, 
they seem to be very cheerful, greeting people, walking them in. And um, when people do leave, the other people that you don't recognize entering at all, they seem to be in an altered state, shall we say. Mm. Not necessarily, like, zombified, but inebriated. Mm. Or, as, or as my wife says, inoberdom. Inoberdom? Inoberdom. Mm. Is that well, inoberdom? Yep. It was great. <laughs> I'm not inoberdom. See, look, mm. ask all these people. I'm not inoberdom. Yeah, no, Z's not inoberdom at all. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, any other questions or anything else that you're looking for? Um, sorry, I was chewing. <laughs> um, hmm. I'm trying to think if there's like anything else that they would be looking out for, but I, I don't know. I guess that's good. I mean, you guys ready? <laughs> yes. So let's do it. Okay. Um, so you don't see them knock. You just see people walk in. Um, you walk into the shop and you see this femme uh, tiefling, again, with that, that pinkish r- light rose hue to their skin. Um, she has more antlers than horns. And um, she is standing there very proper, uh, not leaning on the desk. Um, her hands folded one over the other, kind of into her, her stomach, and she, she smiles, and she goes, Welcome to the Mended Eye. How may I be of assistance to the four of you today? <laughs> We're just looking around. What do you sell? Well, we sell what needs to be sold. So what are you trying to purchase today? And uh, As you walk in, you notice that there are those note cards on the wall, and on the note cards, there are the it's kind of broken up into uh, different names. You notice that there is the name Roan, Dunic, Bex, Wise Pine Forest, the Islands of Ease, Tort, the Understone Tunnels, Karaga, Kreshkagal, and Oakheart. So definitely places. Yes. Um, and the way that they're organized, like you can see that like, there's a breakdown of cities and names and whatnot. And some of the cities and names, um, just based off of like capitals and history and whatnot, you notice that there is um, a few that are missing, that like someone has taken off the, the, the note card um, and maybe has taken that. Um, but yeah. Mm. Um. <laughs> <That's-> <laughs> I was worried, like, my screen froze because David just sitting there so still. <laughs> um, I love it. I mean, Rain was going to let Bea go ahead because she started talking, but... Um, well, we're, uh, we're craftsmen mostly, so we're looking for different kinds of Tools? Tools? Tools! What a useful thing to be doing as a craftsman! Tools! I appreciate this! Wonderful! Well, I don't have many tools to be sold here that are exclusively for your hands, but I have tools that are in the process to be prepared. Oh. Um... May we are... see them? Oh. What, may I ask, location are you serving? Uh, um, <laughs> I guess most recently, Caraga? Caraga, Caraga, we just picked up a fine shipment. If you're going to be hosting them in that location, we'll be more than happy to provide those tools. However, they are not currently ready. They are being prepared. Uh, do you mind if we take a look and... We just want to check the quality. Wonderful. Marked one, if you would follow us, please. Okay. I will follow them, I guess. I'm sorry, I didn't mean you. Oh. I meant the marked one. Please follow me. (laughs) 
<laughs> like, well, it's not me, guys. Oh, <laughs> Marked one, will you please follow me? Only you are allowed to look at what would be available in Karaga. Are they looking at anyone in particular? Yeah, who's he looking at? She's very just kind of like she's blank eyed. Like she's not making eye contact with anybody. She's trying to like take the whole room in at the same time. Um, cool. I'm gonna start pointing at people. <laughs> you 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 point so to not rain. Vea? No, marked one. That is not the right person. I'm asking to tell you. Oh, me. Yes, Marked One, if you would like to join me backstage. <laughs> ah, crap. Okay. Can I take this one with me? Unfortunately, Marked One, you will have to come alone. Well, this is awesome. Um, one moment. Yes, of course, Marked One. How, whatever time oh, that you need. Oh, it's because you touched the freaking thing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, that was out of character. I said it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. How do you not touch stuff? <laughs> Turtle Bunny says, Marked one, marked one, now serving, marked one at counter one. <laughs> Bueller. Uh, Bueller. Okay. Okay. Tol- Tolan's going to go over to you guys and be like, I'll yell if something happens, take care of smells. Okay. Uh, and. Starts. Before you leave, I'm gonna be like, "You got this," and I'm gonna cast guidance on you for, for at least the next minute. You'll have a D4 <laughs> on ability checks. That's <laughs> sweet. Okay. If it can happen quickly. All right. Cool. I'm going in. Okay. I'm ready. I'm so, ready. Strange mended eye person. Wonderful. Please follow me. And she parts a small curtain, and like behind the curtain, there is a veil of magical darkness. Like your vision does not go past it. And you can see that as her hand enters into it, it's it just disappears in the inky blackness of, of this magical void. Um, please follow me. And she steps through. Cool. While she's gone, I'm going to tie a rope around my waist and hand it to Draxel. <laughs> <laughs> I was also going to say, while she's gone, can we like get our paws all over the shop and look around. Of course, yeah. Um, so, Talon, first and foremost, uh, you pass pass the rope off, you tie a quick knot. Go ahead and roll me a quick sleight of hand to see how well you tie this knot. <laughs> uh, okay, at least it's a plus one. Oh, eight. Eight? Uh, it's a pretty decent knot. It, it probably wouldn't be able to, like, pull you out of a well or anything, but you'll be able to, like, tug on it, um, and it won't cool. give way. Okay. Awesome. I've like tucked it in my tunic and like hoped that it's like behind me so it won't be noticeable. <laughs> You're so you... dragging a rope. Shh. It's just I've got a tail, it helps hide it. <laughs> so you enter into the back of the shop and it's way roomier than you thought. It felt a little cramped when you first walked in. Um almost kind of like a, a New York style shop just off the street. Uh not a lot of space, but as you walk in, it's not only wider and broader, but it's 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 huge. And you see that there are these tiered levels, almost cut into the wall. Um, uh, I'm picturing like some restaurants with like that weird tier system, so that way more than uh, just one group of people can be sitting at them. And there are these tables, and in the center of each one of these tables is a large green and purple gemstone, and it's it's about at a, a foot tall. Um, it, it has these elongated points and multi-faced and it shimmers and it, the light catches. Marked one, if you would please make sure that you don't get lost in the gaze. Out of character, I just had a theory. <laughs> I just had a theory. I'm going to call it now. Okay. The golden freaking tools are people. That's That's where I'm going. <laughs> Okay, back in character. All right. I'm not gonna mark that down for later. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny if this theory is right. Where they are now. Golden <laughs> um, tool Gijinka cosplay is happening. <laughs> <laughs> but as you are uh, moving through this, the, this uh, back entrance area, you notice that at these tables there are. A myriad of, of people um, you are seeing, and they are all dead focused, like almost drooling 
focused into this these these gems, these large crystals. And these crystals seem to rotate and hum with some sort of energy. And they're, everyone who's sitting at a table is locked in on these these gems. Um, and <laughs> you see that as you are are walking through, there are, it seems to go up six, maybe seven flights of individual tables inset into the wall, and many, maybe, I think at most you're seeing six people at each table, three on either side, just dead focused into, into these gems. What are the gems? What are they? Yes. Um, you could... He's, ask, he's asking the... Well... Oh, so you're asking, lady. okay. Yeah, he's asking the crazy lady. Well, as, <laughs> as, as a Mark one, you should know that they are what we use to persuade the mind that they are in a more eased state. There is no <laughs> reason to make them feel uncomfortable. Might as well provide them exactly what they desire. Thank you for the reminder. Of course, Marked One. Now, if I may show you to the direction of the items that will be provided for Kuraga, please step this way. Oh, yes, thank you, thank you. Uh, as she is guiding you, back to Rain, Vea, and Draxel. Like, Rain barely even waits till they're gone before he's, like, behind the counter and, like, looking for anything useful in the shop. Okay. Or, like, information or Go ahead whatever. and roll me an investigation check. Okay. Seven. Seven. Uh, you find a box of cards, but it doesn't really make any sense. Um, you find Roan to Sithril, uh, Sithril to Oak Heart, uh, and it's like a single card, and that's it. Roan to Sithril, Sithril to Oak Heart, and then um, Sithril to Dunic, Dunic back to Sithril. Hmm. Like, and it just goes on like that. Just one place, a third place, and then um, could be the first place, could be um, the second place again, there doesn't seem to be any rhyme or reason to it. Can I look at the the cards on the wall and try to figure out which ones are missing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what you notice, go ahead and roll me with an investigation check. <laughs> that is See too painful my music. Investigation is... Um... 13. 13. Um, right off the bat, the first thing that you notice is there is no Stromlos. There is nothing in Stromlos. Um, there's Dunic, there's Bex, there's Wise Pine Forest, there's everything but Stromlos. There's even Rhone, which is a little weird because that's more of an orc settlement. Um, a few traders here and there, um, but it seems to be more of a, uh, of a, of a outpost for people to stop, go into the deserts, pick up things, and then sail off. Like, that's that's the home base for, for it. Um, yeah, there's no Stromlos, and there isn't seem to be any trends, but, like, the capital cities are are all missing from these different locations. Um, the, um, the notable small towns or whatever that might be around Karaga or Karishkagal um, aren't present as much. Um, there's just a few, like, this farm, that farm, this town, that village, and these would be the surrounding areas. And this I would just point out to everyone. Okay. And there was just the one exit into the back that they left you? Yes. Or there more? Okay. Yep. There's the door that you walk through, and it's all boarded up, so you can't see outside. Um, and then it's all, um, it's all the placards. Okay. I mean, we, we should follow them, right? Like, nobody's watching the entrance. <laughs> we probably shouldn't leave Talon alone for too long. Is the rope, is there still, like, rope there? Yeah, there's still, the rope is still there. It's not cutting, uh, it's not like a dimension that they just walk through. Um, yeah. it's just a, a, a veil of magical darkness. Okay, so yeah, I'm just, like, seeing, like, so we can tell about how far in he is. Uh, probably about 20 feet, maybe 30. Okay. Wait and see if he tugs. I'll go in. Not, we don't know how many people are back there. Um, I mean, I think Rain is just gonna, like, kind of hold to the rope and go through. 
Okay, are you just walking through? Yeah. Okay, about how much time has passed since I initially cast Path Without Trace? Uh, 40 minutes. Okay, I'm following. Okay. Okay. Um, and can we, can I go in sneaking? There we go, that's what I was looking for. <laughs> there you go, go ahead everybody who wants to, roll me a stealth. Okay. Uh, not great. Twelve. Twelve? Uh, 24. 24. Oh, wait. Bad today. Oh, no. Just to, to help hold him out, I cast Guidance on him. There's no plus 10. Oh. His Guidance is also Concentration. Oh, no. 14. Oh. 14. Oh, wait. What's my stuff? 18. Oh, I didn't add the 10 in the first place, so it's still 12. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Works out pretty well. So you guys are, are able to, like... Not pull on the rope to to gain sl- uh, to pull the slack, but you're using it more as a guide, and so you kind of just like run your hand along the rope, keeping up the slack on the back end, so as not to like pull tall and back. Um, and as you are walking in, you see the same thing. There are these tables, these large crystals, multifaceted and just glowing with some sort of ethereal energy, um, and there are hundreds of people sitting at these different tables, as far as you can see. Um, you notice that the the rope has turned a corner. You do not see Tallinn. You, know, you do not see the strange tiefling woman. Um, jumping back to Tallinn, um, you are taken to a small little section. Uh, there are, again, more of these tables, and it doesn't take you very long to find um, to find the Karaga section. And you're, you notice that there are a few cosplayers that you noticed at the at NaniCon. And she leads you, and she kind of Vanna White gestures. These are all of the Karaga available to host the energies in that area. If you would like, we can provide you transportation in our shop next door to transport to get them safely and without inconveniencing their desires. Ah. Ah. Do I see the Goblin Brothers? You do see them. You see them at the very top. Um, third row, far left. They seem to be enthralled with this gem. Do the, the, you see ears really focusing in on it and, and seem to be just almost reaching out to it. Whereas most of these people are rather static. They're not moving. They're They're holding a position, but... Like, all of them seem to be drawn to it almost um, unnaturally so. Okay. Would it be possible for me to, so, like, select the ones that I want right now? If you believe that you're available for transport, yes. Um, anything on the bottom row is what we would highly recommend at this point in time. Second row is a little bit questionable, as we have not been able to give them full guidance. And the top row is unfortunately unable to be provided at this time. I can't make a special request, then? Marked one, if that is something that you'd so desire, you must undergo more initiation. More initiation. (laughs) Indeed. We can do this now, if you so desire. What does it entail? And... She she reaches out and she pulls one of the stones. I remove your veil of as being a marked one and make you a member of the mended chain. Oh. And that's where we're gonna end it, you guys. Oh shoot! Uh. <laughs> There's a little and stone oh. and just being like, oh <laughs> Wow! You guys! My goodness! You guys <laughs> traveled so far. Okay. So far. You guys are in Sithril now. No one, no one told Tolan's grandma not to, to pick him up. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tolan! Your poor grandma! There's a lot of other important things going on right now I forgot. <laughs> uh, David when... retroactively did a bunch of stuff. I could leave a note on the door. <laughs> Don't get used to the DM forgetting everything. <laughs> <laughs> when Ears was jumping through the trash, I remembered that I'm wearing this awesome goblin shirt. 
Fury of the Small. Ah, oh, oh, yes! yes! That is lovely. Yeah. I love I have it. I my man. giant weeb shirt on today. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Ah, oh, that's so great. <laughs> I I do enjoy your theories, especially you, v- v- Fire. Like that. That is a fun, <laughs> fun theory that I'm not not writing down for whatever reasons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was just like, wait, they're saying they need tools and the golden tools. Oh my gosh, no! <laughs> Are made of people. Tur- Colin <laughs> says that out loud, and everyone just like looks at their tools, and it's just like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> so like green is people. <laughs> Turtle Bunny says, are you implying that Grandma is not important? That is definitely not the case. Grandma oh, is no. very important. She's so important. Yes. She's just, you know, not not kidnapped. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. safe. Yeah, she's mm-hmm. safe. Mm-hmm. She's, she's totally fine. She's fine. Out. She don't have to uh, rescue her yet. Doesn't know where to pick up Tola now, though, because she doesn't know where he is. We're going to get back, and there's going to be all, like, Tolan space on all the milk cartons. <laughs> <laughs> you just went missing. <laughs> this is like totally off topic, but speaking of grandmas, did we get a name for party grandma? Uh, oh, no, I don't oh, think we did. <laughs> I, don't, I don't recall. I if think we she's did just that. party grandma. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I just okay. wanted to make sure because I didn't see it on my list. <laughs> Work in progress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can't yeah. seem to draw Colin's head, so he doesn't have one right now. Um, <laughs> uh, Rain is like very uncomfortable because he's oh. so inconspicuous in his like all black goth attire. <laughs> and, like, why do people keep knowing who I am? Okay, go ahead. Let's do that one. Oh yay! <laughs> oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love it. I love it so much. That's so good. Eventually, I'm going to turn into one of those. Yes. Yes. I love it so much. Amazing. Yeah, I'm trying to draw Tolan all acting. (laughs) (laughs) I'm struggling because dragon heads are hard to draw. Why did I pick this race? (laughs) We'll get you a helmet. That'll cover it up, right? Uh Yeah. 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 Old horns and stuff. Uh, all right. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for attending our Patreon exclusive live stream. We went off without a hitch this time, you guys. Yeah. Hey! 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 Show. We did it right this time. And by hey! we, I mean I. And we, I did not screw up anything. I am, <laughs> I am so surprised and so excited. Turtle Bunny goes, "Oh yay! Oh no!" <laughs> 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 um, it's a fantastic drawing. We will add it to the uh, Patreon. So if you would like to see the art, because uh, you are listening to this in the afterwards, because we are doing the audio only, make sure that you are following us on our Patreon, patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch. Uh, we would love to see everything, and we would love to hear your theories. Do you think that the hammers and the gold items um, are people? What, <laughs> what uh, What's happening there? Um, Thanks so much for, for joining us, you guys. Uh, make sure that you are following all of the crazy creative people um, as I move myself out of the way. Uh, Panin at Panin, Jazzy at Crimson Nova, at, uh, v, uh, at Vfire Cosplay for Vfire, and at Skysteel for Dustin. Thank you again for joining us, Jazzy and Dustin. We really appreciate you coming along and, and playing this silly, silly game with all of us. All right, awesome. you guys. All right, you guys. Have a good one. Thanks for taking a seat at the table, and hopefully hey. keep me all of your roles be interesting. Good night, hey. everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.